Hi guys and welcome to another Technology Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking about uh, IBM Curator, which is a SIM solution and a log management solution. Primarily what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at how we get uh, alerts out from Windows and do some custom reporting, uh, maybe around things like um, auditing files that are being accessed. So we'll go ahead and take a look. Um, first up, I'll take a wee look at QRadar. Um, so this is it here. Um, comes in a few flavors. This is the SIM edition. So that means that um, we get the addition of network activities. Uh, so this is um, flow monitoring. We'll go into this a little bit later. The add-on here is vulnerabilities. So this is vulnerability management. And there's an additional add-on you can get for forensics, which is full packet capture and analysis. Uh, and the entry edition is this edition over here. This is just called Log Manager. So what this does um, is it takes the events from your devices into log activity, um, stores them there, and we can then do reports in that central location. It's a really good place to get started on. What I'm going to show you today uh, is for both QRadar SIM and also Log Manager. Um, but I'm going to be showing this in, in QRadar. So I've got this uh, server sitting here. It's running on Amazon Instance. Um, and what I've done is I've deployed this agent here. This is the QRadar Win Collect agent. So for Windows, I can do it um, agentless or with an agent. I've chosen to do with an agent just because it's an AWS instance, a little bit harder to get to. Uh, and as you can see, what I've got here is I've got this file called sensitive. And on here, we have set up Windows auditing on it, OK? So if we go to security, advanced, and auditing, OK? So we can see that um, we're going to audit anybody accessing uh, and also trying to access this file. So that's been switched on in Windows. So Windows security event log will get that sort of information and the agent will then pass that on to Curator. So in Curator, <clears throat> what we need to do is after we install the agent, the WinCollect agent in this instance, um, a WinCollect agent will show up here. Okay. And then what we do <clears throat> is we create a log source that uses an agent. Okay, so um, I don't have my VPN up to my AWS, so that's that's why we're not getting any information just now. So basically, we just set that up. <clears throat> now that's got the log source. So the log source passes events uh, from the end device. In this case, it's uh, a Windows server. We can create log sources out of the box for tons of different appliances. So we take a quick look at this. Okay, so all these devices here, it knows about and can directly talk to and take this feed in. Okay, and what I didn't show you on the log source for the Windows, let me quickly go back to that. That's this one here. We've got this concept of grouping. Okay, so this log source um, I have put into these two groups here, one called Windows Servers, because it's a Windows Server, and one called Sensitive Data Servers. So this is one which I created myself where I'm going to put uh, all my servers which have some sensitive data on it, and it just makes it easier to report on it. So these are log source groups. So I can create my own custom log source groups here. This is obviously one which I've put in, sensitive data servers, uh, and then add sources to them. So the other thing that I've set up here um, is reference sets. Oops, do I want to change my scheme? No, I don't, thank you. Okay. So reference sets here. 
Um, and what these are kind of out of the box, but we need to put some data into it. So sensitive data here. So basically, I've gone along and said that this value here, which happens to be uh, a file name, I'm calling that sensitive data. Yeah, so I'll use this in rules later on. So the interesting thing to see here um, is if we look at reports, out of the box, again, there is lots and lots of reports. OK. So just one of 42 pages, if we get a look at the grouping, there's lots of different reports on different compliance and things. So ISO 27,000. Okay, so there's all these reports. Um, they're there out of the box. They're not just going to magically work. So we need to do a little bit of configuration. We need to understand um, the network and the reports and put them together. So this is what I'm using things like the sensitive data group for. <clears throat> and also the reference sets. So what I like to do is I like to use uh, these reports as a bit of a template, but then create my own version of them so I understand truly what's going on and make sure I'm getting all the correct data and things. So how I go about creating a report is um, I basically create a search on the log activity. So the log activity is those events coming on in, in real time. <clears throat> so quickly, what I can do here, um, let's, let's just see, let's look at the uh, last 24 hours. <clears throat> um, and I can quickly put add filters in here. OK, so a quick filter here might be uh, the log source group. sensitive data. So quickly here, right, what I'm suddenly doing is saying, show me all the events uh, from the servers that I've got in that sensitive data place. Okay. I've got a couple of uh, reports pre-made, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run these for you and I'm going to show you the difference between them. So I've saved these in quick searches. So. Let's take a look at this CERIC sensitive data reference set the last seven days. So this is a, an ISO 27001 style report. This is one of the things that you need to report on, access to sensitive data. So as you can see here, um, I've built this up by saying, well, let's get a look at um, this group, which I've defined as the sensitive data servers. Uh, I'm obviously doing it over the last 24 hours. <clears throat> And <clears throat> what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a particular field. Why does that keep coming up? Don't know. So I'm looking at a particular field and I'm saying, does that contain the information that I has defined as sensitive data? And this is, a, this is the field that I've been looking at. So this is actually an extraction level as well. So what I've done is I've created this as, a, as you see here, it's a custom field. So I've extracted that out of the out of the uh, event payload effectively, <clears throat> and created this. So quickly we can see that um, this user called user and this user called administrator uh, they have accessed this thing called C drive sensitive dot text, yeah. and they've done it a few different times. <clears throat> So it's a, it's a quick report here. Uh, might be quite useful to suddenly see, oh, wait a minute, there's, there's a user accessing sensitive data that shouldn't be. Um, I know this is a, a bit of a naughty example, but it, it shows you the power um, that's available. Now, what I want to do is show you a slightly different report. So I've got, again, this saved as quick search. So basically, to save quick searches, all I do is I, I create a search, and then I can save that search. And then reports are basically just calling those searches at a spe specific time um, and then sending out the report. So again, I look down here. So remember the last one we looked at is reference set. So that was we were using that reference set which we created where we put that C drive slash sensitive dot text. 
So what it's done is it's looked through uh, any events from those servers and gone to see whether that custom field which I created actually contained the text or the values in the reference set. This one's slightly different. Now, the first thing to note here is that we've got three axes here. So why is this? So my report, I've written this report in a slightly different way. So what I've done is I've looked at that same group of servers, but I've actually gone into the payload of the event and just searched for the word sensitive. Okay, So whether that uh, wherever that appeared, that word sensitive, and not C drive slash sensitive dot text, just the word sensitive. So as we can see, uh, there was also a file, C drive users administrator desktop slash sensitive dot text. Okay, so this is a, a nice way of being able to check things that maybe you don't know about. So you would set up your report maybe the first report you know um, tell me anything where this file that I know has been accessed and of course we've then got to set that up in in, in Windows and set up the the auditing policy to be able to create that event in the security log which will pass it on to curator um, but another way is that you can just check the you know the, the payload of of this event and you can check it for anything any string so all we're just doing here is just checking it for the word sensitive. So if we had the word sensitive in, in something else, it would get pulled into this report. So here I would probably run the first report, you know, sort of weekly for compliance. This is what we know about, everything's going fine. And occasionally I would run this report, which would almost tell me about things that I don't know about. This is really beginning to annoy me. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we need to be careful when we create these searches as well about um, the order that we do things in. So we don't want to just go ahead and search uh, the payload of every single event because we could be getting thousands of events per second, uh, which is obviously grinding the machine to a halt. So we need to think about um, funneling it down. So that's why we're doing things like, well, these are the sensitive data servers. And that's why I'm probably not going to run this report all the time, but it's one I'm manually check every now and then. So I hope that's given you a, a bit of a flavor of some of the things that we can do with QRadar. If it seemed a little bit complicated, don't worry about it. Um, we can do these as managed services for you where we create everything, set it all up, manage the whole thing for you. Um, we can do both the, the SIM and of course the, the log manager. So those things that I showed you there, that's in the log manager. Okay, so log manager uh, <clears throat> is all about getting all these events to one location where we can then <coughs> analyze them and store them. In case the other thing that you want to see would be <coughs> uh, retention policies. So we can easily set up here and say, so the default here is that we're going to keep everything for a month, but we can set up different things, you know, so we, we keep uh, maybe the sensitive data uh, alerts for longer. Uh, you want to keep them for six months or anything like that. So this is all about uh, ticking off compliance, one place for us to get our reports. Um, so it's, it's a very good starting place and everything that I've showed you today is is it in this. So the full sim basically adds this offense tab. Okay, this offense tab is about taking multiple events from multiple different feeds and trying to see if there's if there's a bit of a pattern which creates an offense. So for instance, um, I, there's a, a vulnerability on a server, uh, a user that isn't usually logged in, logs in, uh, that server then starts scanning something else uh, and then some malware is picked up on that server. So all of them can go together and creates uh, an offense which would need a bit of investigation. And it's also got the network activity. So network activity is flows. So it's flow collectors here. Um, I've not actually got the flow switched on just now, but if I go to flow sources and I enable these, I will start taking network flows in. And of course they really are required to 
help create those offences. So the offences will be looking at network flows along with events. Uh, and then the other add-on that we've got here is the vulnerability manager. So here um, we can go on and do scans. We see uh, reports on the asset so risk score, and then we can drill into that and we can see which patches it needs. Uh, that's, a, that's an add-on, but also we can go in here to scanners. And if you guys have got your own scanner doing things already, one of these scanners, then we can add it in here and take a feed from that. And that will populate the asset list. Okay, in the asset list, um, Will, will help in all these rules. So the asset list will be, you know, say uh, an IP address or a server. It will have its weighting of criticality, uh, availability, whether or not it's got um, sensitive data on it, uh, and they will go to, to help the rules. But all of these um, we can provide as a managed service. Uh, it can be an appliance on your site. It can be connecting to our cloud appliance. Um, so we can take care of all these reports for you, but I hope it's showing you, um, if you've not seen it before, a little bit about the power of what it can do for you. Uh, and if you have seen it, you probably uh, get a little bit lost and there's lots and lots of documentation. It's a very powerful tool, but hopefully it's showing you uh, how you can quickly and easily get started. Well, thanks very much for your time uh, and we'll see you all next month.